This is Far Cry 5, we're taking a look at the arcade editor, kind of going over a general guide to get you going so you learn the basics and kind of jump right in. So obviously from the start we have a new map for solo and co-op missions, a new map for multiplayer, or the option to edit an existing map. So this plays out a lot like the Halo Forge, um, a little bit more complicated but not as complicated as the Halo 5 Guardian setting. So this is the mode uh, that actually was in some of the older Far Cry games and it's been brought back and this should add some great longevity to the uh, title itself. So we can start out by picking a mode obviously for multiplayer, deathmatch, team deathmatch and so forth. So we're gonna do, I don't know, let's say assault. We're basically going over basics and just kinda covering all the categories and so forth. Uh, we can do a cedar forest, a rocky island, an outer world. Uh, I think it might be neat just to do an empty map and kind of go from there. So once this loads up, uh, immediately you can see we have a sort of empty canvas, a large area from which we can build. And uh, let's go over the camera. So camera up and down. Easy to move around. There's an undo button. At the top you have memory, textures, and AI. So there's limits. Uh, based on what the engine can handle because obviously if you overload a map you're not going to be able to play it uh, without extreme performance issues so they create sort of a benchmark guide so familiar familiarize yourself with the left hand side you know moving objects object selection deleting pivots growth uh, we have a menu so you do have to actually validate your maps so go to the manage map and you can save load a map uh, you can explore a map. You can publish. It's not a good idea because it's not available. And, uh, yeah. Obviously, you can explore your maps too. But you do actually have to make sure they are validated and so forth under the editor sections. You can see validation. There's certain check marks you have to actually get the OK on before you can continue forward. Uh, you can also change the map details, you can do gameplay modifiers, which are actually in the toolbox menu as well. And then you have general editor settings as far as, like, you know, the fog and how everything's supposed to display. Uh, obviously you don't want things being shown all the time while you're working, and that kind of gives you the option. So, going back to things, so there's the co-op sort of missions and so forth. These are fun little kind of things you can do with a buddy where you work through a mission. There's some really cool psychedelic ones. There's some straight up shooting people, assassinations. So you can create these missions and then people can play on them, vote for them, say they're good, say they're bad. There's multiplayer maps. So it's really going to be very creator and uh, team focused. And that's one thing I actually really wish Halo's Forge engine would do is perhaps set up little missions. I think that'd be really cool in the Forge. And this one also feels like a bit step of a step up because you're doing textures and so forth in it. So to start, um, obviously you saw the gameplay modifier, so that's here too. And I want to start with environment and audio, which is on the left hand side here. So we have the day-night cycle, where you can adjust the hour of the day dynamically. I think we kind of want it to be a little bit bright out. You can change the minutes, you can change the latitude of the sun and moon, angles, moon phases, the ambience, the moon size. This has got to be like nighttime for that to show. See the stars and so forth. But you get an idea that you have a really big close moon for tidal waves. And you know, you can do like a fast de increase, you can f do a fast decrease, and you can see those options on the bottom left there. So we're going to back out. The next area is the weather. So you can make it sort of an apocalyptic glow or bliss or bloodshed or blueberry field. And there's all these different options. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's really like ooh, Unicorn Land. Something special you can do. You can throw clouds up too if you want. You get a bunch of different cloud designs. You change the height of the clouds, the shadows. You can have cloud shadows, but it's gonna obviously rendering and stuff. You can have a wind force, which makes a little bit more sense um, when you add grass in. You can also have a storm going on. You can make it stormy. All right, so we added uh, texture and a little bit of kind of flora there, just so you get an idea of 
uh, the wind sort of coming in. See the clouds over it, just so you can kind of see the plants move a bit. Even though these ones really aren't giving me much. Usually like the grass would like really sway. You can kind of see just a little bit how much they've uh, changed based on the wind force. You'll see it more with like trees and everything that you have in there. So aside from weather, we have fog. <laughs> you can change like the density of the fog. You can make it all misty and scary. You can change the heights, phases, the colors. You can do all kinds of weird things and make your fog super creepy. Whatever you'd like. We can add a backdrop in. Maybe like an alpine. You can kind of see the outline there. It's kind of hard with the fog. And you can change like the angle. There's post effects. You can add like a color filter over everything. Black and white. Green, cyber, cyan, so forth. Ooh. Do all kinds of cool things. You know, whatever you kind of want to do. You change that, uh, the opacity, you can change the effect over top of it and make it really dirty, effect exposure and opacity. You know, all kinds of different options there. There's also audio, you can have sorts of uh, ambience included, exterior goes down and so forth to kind of give your place a feeling. You can actually have different audio music themes. So that leads into another aspect that I think is really cool is the fact that this pulls from a number of Ubisoft titles because they do share similar um, you know engines uh, so we can create a snapshot you do kinda need one just to display things you simply put it up take a screenshot and you know that's basically that uh, we have map details obviously you've seen that before that was again in the menus so we have loadouts uh, every map you can kinda build your own weapon loadouts you can put all kinds of different guns ammunition and so forth I, I just lightly go over this one you can change like gear health everything think of it like the uh, the halo sort of forge where you get to choose what weapons people have access to their melee slots their extra weapons and so forth so we're gonna get some fun little mini games that people are gonna be able to create uh, based on things, uh, you can rename, you can change, you can edit, you can clear, you can, you can do whatever you want with the loadouts. There's lots of tweaks. I don't think I really need to go into it too much. So here's the terrain. First off, the terrain tools: bump, flatten, raise, lower, smooth, ramp, erosion. So we're gonna do the bump and just kind of give an idea of that. And you can see how it's like easily raised. You can change the radius of how much you do. So it's just like a little bit of a bump. Uh, we can also dig too if you want, kind of make little holes and you know so forth as you can see like the donut hole there. You can raise it a bit more, do whatever you'd like. You get the idea of it. There's different shapes too. You can do like a square if you like, and raise a square style. Uh, obviously the flatten, you know, you flatten things out. I think you're going to get the idea generally of what the different tools here do. I mean smoothing, eroding, and all the little tweaking and so forth. From there you can kind of paint a texture if you'd like. Lots of different textures. Now we'll do that one. You can change the radius, the speed. You can kind of do little bits of it too. You can do patches of uh, terrain too if you'd like to match up and have a map that's like maybe a bit of a desert, maybe a bit of uh, not a desert. Uh, you can add vegetation too and kind of wholesale vegetation if you'd like different options, water grass and so forth if you'd like to do that and you can change again, circle and so forth if you'd like to and that's kinda like just a, a sort of faster vegetation style Yeah. you know if that's something you want to do just add fast vegetation in there as you can see it's kind of hard to tell, but it's that little purple grass that popped up. That's the vegetation I'm adding in in like a large square. And obviously, you can alter the rad like the radius. Uh, we can add roads. Lots of different road types. Yeah, you know, like a path of leaves or something. And then you just kind of change it, you know, and change how the road's going. Connect a new road. Do whatever you'd like, you know. And you can add, yeah, so you get paths and regular roads, uh, water, you can do oceans or lakes, we're going to do a lake style here, and as you can see, you're getting an outline of it already, of it, how it's uh, 
appearing there. And that's just kind of making the water appear, and you can have little pools of it, you can have oceans, and you can use that as a boundary. I've seen a couple of the pre-made maps that use the water as a boundary. And just like that, there's water in the hole. You can alter the terrain too if you'd like. More water will appear. And yeah, it's just a very simple tool to use, but there's a lot of depth to it. So these are the limits. You kind of just build a limit. Obviously, you don't want uh, people running away into this whole area. You want things focused, right? I mean, obviously, you'd like a bigger map if that could be possible, but you do work within the limitations of what's available at the top there, and you do get quite a bit of uh, you know technology behind it as far as what items you can do. I, I think it's a fairly good amount. Next area is the AI. So we can add uh, allies enemies and we can sort of change their behaviors so we've got enemies VIP enemies angel enemies you know you will kinda get an idea of them if you've played the the campaign and so forth alright so there we go we've put down a person I think it's also good to kind of go over additional options that I maybe should have right away but uh, you can kind of see the person this is very dev tool like you can get the idea of the situation around them, how you can alter them, and so forth. You can click object items, you can edit coordinates, pivots, change the control zones. You know, you can kind of just easily move them along and so forth if that's your kind of thing. And you can do this with like basically all the options. You can delete the selection, pivot, grow it, and uh, everything from there. You can also just move it too if you'd like. I'd like to move her here. And there's, you know, different kind of waves you can set up to. Lots of different people types. You know, berserkers, military guys, cowboys, whatever you like. Tons and tons and tons of people. Different, like, rocket guys, sniper people, whatever you want. All available. And obviously there's the different types, too. I'm not going to go into all of them. Uh, add new objects. And you can do, like, bears. You can have them, like curious a digging bear you can have a bear looking around a bear sleeping you can do like birds you have like a chicken eating and you can do all these different behaviors for kind of animals or for characters too you can have allies being like cautious alerted uh, looking through debris idle you, you really have to sit through and think of you know what do I want them to be doing you can have like a bartender cleaning a table or something if you want to set up a saloon or <laughs> just some I don't know maybe some kind of social map for it's just like a a fun laugh. You can have like shared ones, hostages, you can have like moods. Bad at door. What is bad at door? Drunk lean on wall? That's fun. So that's the uh, animation points. You can do control zones. Kind of set up territories too for animals and then you can get like aggressive. There's a lot of depth here. So let me go to the allies. Some of these guys might be familiar. And you can set up allies too to work with you. This guy straight out of Forza. Oh, cool little mega guys. That's neat. So they do have fun with it because, you know, it's Ubisoft. They have a chill time. Go back to Addy. I, uh, I think there was. No. Neutrals. It's the regular neutral civilian. Actually, I think that's a character in the story. I don't know, whatever. And then we got our animals, too. Like a bear. Set up a couple bears. And the bald eagle. Americans love their bald eagles. Incredible animal textures. Beehives, you know, you gotta have bees to swing at. Couple chickens. All about the Sea of Thieves. Oh, I guess these are roosters. These are chickens. Sea of Thieves, we capture chickens at school. You can add some, like, cougars. Fun stuff. And like trouts, if you want them in the water, well, I can see their salmon. My bad. But you get an idea, there's lots of different animals. And there's even really fun animals like the Yeti. What? Look at that thing. That's probably from that one DLC in, uh. Maximum. Yeah, that one DLC from Far Cry 4, I believe it was, but it's like a Yeti one. 
I think that's where it's from. So we've gone over that element, now we have the final thing, the objects, which are like the biggest part of this. This is where you build what your map is composed of. So we've got lights and objects, we've got dust effects, dust small, then we got like electrical effects, sparks, sprays, I guess I should show those more in depth. Your little sprays on things, little particle effects everywhere. The Yetis are cool now. Fire, you know, if you want a big fire. Insects, flies, and so forth. Racing effects, you know, and get the fireworks. Now we got a real showing going on. Hopefully, this isn't too annoying to people. I know people whine in my one Tomb Raider video because I thought it was funny to have Lara with like a rainbow behind her. Whatever. Like a sprinkler water drops. So you really can do all kinds of cool things with this. And it's not like I'm just discovering it, but I'm just trying to give an idea there. It's like, you know, like, look at all the cool things. Spray paint, like, textures on the ground here. Tons of different texture types. Uh, obviously, we've got, like, bushes. Single ones. So, I mean, obviously, there's the options I showed earlier for, like, manipulating various things. But, obviously, there's the manual inputs, too, where you can really get the fine tuning in there if you want, you know, like caves. The Yetis need like a cave. Floating platforms, there's ice. You know, you have ice for the Yetis in the distance. Vines, if you want to add vines too, you know, throw some vines down, it's cool. Tons of nature objects, game objects, you know, obviously you want to put spawn points down so people can actually spawn in. Permanent objective markers, you can have different kinds of spawn points too, depending on the mode. Obviously, if you're doing like a multiplayer team deathmatch, you're gonna have like, you know, one team and one team. And please do good spawns when you're doing multiplayer. The spawns on some maps are so bad. Just think about it. So we've got a lot of melee items you can put down. <coughs> Maybe you want a paddle down there. Maybe a rod. Uh, I guess it's a pipe. Handguns, rifles, launchers. Oh, there's like a rocket there. And those are on the ground. You can do like a turret where it's like standing up and go pop, 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 you know. Or a mortar too. Vehicles, land vehicles. Got the American trucks. Got the all American in this game. Super patriotic. Throw that onto the fireworks and the Gettys. Nothing screams America like that. Tons of different cars. <coughs> too many cars, actually. Trucks, regular vehicles, Jeeps, buses. Yeah. So whatever you'd like there. Air vehicles, helicopters. Don't put like weird, unless you're doing like an all flying map, don't put helicopters and stuff on your levels. They're just, no, don't do it. Water based vehicles, and like a jet ski in there for America. These are like hovercrafts, you know, they're like just big vehicles. Yeah, the boats with the guns on them. You don't see them a lot in the game, or at least I haven't. So the climbable sections, obviously if you want people to be able to climb up on buildings, tons of different ladder types. Climbable ledges, which you see all over the campaign, got zip lines, you can kind of set anchor everywhere. And you can have people zip lining places. I think it's kind of cool. So those are the gameplay things, obviously there's like health too, health packs, or health armor as well. Explosives, if you want to add a big boom, kind of like explode everything. Choice is yours. Now we're going to move to Far Cry 5. So there's objects from the game. Tons. So many objects, guys, from so many different games. Furniture, you know, from the actual Far Cry 5. Just like government buildings, religious buildings, all sorts of things. So many structures, you know, commercial. You really just sit here for hours, like, picking things out that you want to put in. But you can take things a step further, too, and not just be Far Cry 5. And that's right, there's more than Far Cry 5. There's also Far Cry 4, which I find something that might be familiar to people. So you can take from Far Cry 4 if you'd like. You can take from generic shapes, because everybody likes generic shapes that you put textures on. You know, they're lots of fun. Make a cube world, you know, do whatever you want. I think there's like a Neon Gladiators that kind of does the simple style to it. 
Windows, Trials, whatever you want. There's also Watch Dogs, which I think is really interesting. I think it's the first Watch Dogs, too, if I'm not, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Which is kind of cool. I liked the first Watch Dogs. A lot of people hated it. Eh, I thought it was cool. So that's Watch Dogs. Black Flag. I know a lot of people love them some Black Flag. And it's, it's kind of crazy seeing those items all available in here, but I don't see why not if they're easy to put in. You can create like a whole pirates type situation. I mean, look at all these objects. They should be familiar to some people. Houses. No, it's like, it's, those are the houses from Black Flag. It's amazing they actually fit in here so well. It's probably easy there or else they wouldn't have included it. Far Cry Primal and uh, Unity too. Primal's like the before whatever thingy. Animal carcasses, gotta have a bunch of fish, right? Something cooler than that. I guess they really limit your unity and stuff. Guess they weren't huge unity fans. Fair enough. I wasn't either. Oh, of course you can have the bar from unity. Yeah. Not surprised one bit. So, I mean, that kind of goes over the objects, obviously nature and everything, and I think this has been a very comprehensive look, and I mean, look at all the stuff I can put in, and I'm only using, like, half of things. A little bit more than I thought I would, but, I mean, there's lots of little details going on here, particle effects, explosions, fire, and I hope this was an easy kind of look at all the different aspects, and showed them, like, tips and tricks on everything, uh, if you have any further questions, let me know. I'll try my best. Obviously, there's going to be some complicated details in here, and people are going to make some crazy things, but I'm not going to dive into it too much, because I'd rather have other people make content as opposed to me doing it.